In today's episode, we're going to be building out the bookshelf page. It's going to have these two sections uh, where we will house all our different categories, our reading category, the to read and the finish category. We'll be able to view all of our books in these cards. We'll be able to favorite them, which will automatically update it on the API. We'll also have a menu here, which we can change the status of them. Again, if we change this to finished, it will load and actually set it on the API and it's all happening in real time. We'll also be able to click on view more and have a dialogue pop up with different information about the book. If we click on read more, it'll open up an info link. Maybe we'll be able to get a preview of the book and be able to get an idea of what's inside it. We'll also be able to delete books from our bookshelf as well as handle pagination to our AWS AppSync API. This five part course will teach you how to create a full stack application in React using TypeScript, Material UI, and a Perl GraphQL on the front end, whilst using AWS on the back end with services such as AWS AppSync with DynamoDB and AWS Cognito for authentication. I'll be showing you the most easiest and scalable way to build your integrations. As well as this, we'll be integrating the Google Books API on our front end application so that we can see how to integrate REST APIs with the Apollo GraphQL library. This course will teach you many valuable skills that will give you great confidence on your full stack journey so make sure to subscribe to catch all of the episodes as soon as i release them in the last video we left off with the explore page complete we're able to load in different books and we're also able to view some information about them and also add them to our bookshelf once we add them to our bookshelf we are hitting our AppSync api endpoint and we are returning those books back from the server we also have a button here for creating new books which we don't need anymore because now we're using these add to bookshelf buttons to actually add them to the bookshelf so let's get started in building out our bookshelf we'll head over to our code and go to the bookshelf component and in here we can remove the create book mutation as we're not going to need that anymore and let's get rid of that button that we created for it as well. And this time, instead of doing our logic within the bookshelf component itself, we're actually going to be using a custom hook. So to do this, we're going to create a new folder called hooks. And within that folder, we'll create a file called use bookshelf. And in here, we'll create a function called use bookshelf, which is for now we're just going to return an empty object. And this is how we're going to be defining our custom hook. And what we want to do is move this query inside of the hook so i'm just going to move this inside here for now and to start off with i'm just going to return all of these from the hook like this let's just import this as well and we'll save that so now in our bookshelf component instead of starting to have those logic there what we'll do is instead we'll get all the data that we need from our custom hook so let's just do data and loading which will be from use bookshelf now we can get rid of all of these and as you can see this still works the same way as it did before we're just now using this custom hook to load in our data instead of getting it directly from here cool so in the last video when we did the logic for creating the book mutation we set the status to book status dot on read as default and the status of the books are going to be up to the user to manage to say whether they are currently reading this book they haven't read it yet or they've finished reading it so when we're displaying this to the user we also want to separate out these books into these different categories so in order to do that we're going to create a new value called books and we're going to be using use memo to do this so let's just import use memo from react and let's import book as well as book status and basically what we're doing here is we are looking at the data that's returned back from our list books query obviously there is the list books query item and the items and we're filtering out all the books that are of type book status reading and we're putting that into a value called reading so in the end we end up with books which has three different properties on it that will have their respected books in now we no longer need to return data from here and what we'll do is return books instead we can also remove these two from here as we don't really need these at the moment and if we go back to bookshelf we can now change this to books and instead of going to use books.items for now we're just going to say books.unread which is 
basically going to be all of our books for now and you can see this isn't actually rendering all of them so i wonder if that's because we didn't set book status on some of them so if let's just load this data in again we've got three books here two of those books are test book and my book and we can see we haven't got a status on them so they've been filtered out we can also update this logic to include those null values as well so if we just add this to here for the on red one and we save that now we can see that we've also got this test book and my book coming up in here as well um but i'm not going to use that just because i want to filter out those bad data from my results anyway so we'll just keep it like this for now and then what i'm going to add in are the two other mutations that we created for the books which come from update book and delete book so we're just going to import these in so we'll now have access to these two methods update book and delete book and these two loading variables as well so let's just expose the loading from this hook for now and let's create some handlers for updating and deleting the books we'll create a function called handle update book which will take in an object of update book status and as you can see it's complaining about the fact that status isn't on the update book input and that's something that we actually need to change on our api so if we go into our bookshelf cdk repository and scroll down to the update book input you can see we didn't add in the status on here so i'm actually just going to get the status from here and include this into the update book input and save that now if i do a cdk deploy i should be able to push those changes to my graphql endpoint and then be able to pull that back down in my cogen files now that's done let's go back to our bookshelf repository and i'm just going to run yarn cogen again we should get the latest schema down and that should include status in there for us so now if let's just go into here we can see status has now been added so let's go back this error should go away by itself and now we can expose this method as well now let's add in a handler for the delete book the delete book is just going to take in an id and we'll use it in the variables for deleting the book so let's expose this as well now now you can see our hook really starting to take shape we are getting in all the different data that we need and the different handling methods are in here as well so now that we've got these let's go and start building out our ui with the data that we've gotten back i'm just going to copy all of these and paste them in here so we can get all of that data back that we will need let's get rid of this for now and start building it out first thing we're going to do is add in a stack with a space between and we're going to import the stack for material ui and page title that we use in the home component as well this one we're going to be naming it my bookshelf let's just go and see how that looks yes now we've got our title the same as we do on our explore page and then we want to start creating these containers for displaying our books so the first thing we'll do is just create a stack with spacing of one for now and then let's go ahead and create a new file called bookshelf tabs as well as a new file called bookshelf.style.tsx create our style components and the two that we're going to need right now is the category container and the tabs header these will just be styled boxes with border and border radius and the tabs header is just going to have a solid border bottom we're going to start off with this component we have a props interface of tabs which is an object of any name pointing to a react node and then also taking in the books count so basically we're saying there is a name attached to another react component and we're going to be using these to show the different tabs we have a stock handled tab management here just going to rename this to tab and set tab and we'll just name this tab as well and then we can use value equals tab here so that makes a little bit more sense about what this code is doing and then we're using that category container that we just created as well as the tabs header and then within that we just have a stack with a direction of a row and a justify content of space in between we then have our tab which is imported from material ui and this is the component that is being handled by these properties here so we can use those to change which tab we're on and the way we're displaying the tabs is by doing an object keys on the 
tabs object which will give us an array of all the different property names in there and then we're basically mapping over that to return a tab which has a key of index and the label is the tab name which is the name of the property from the object and then underneath the header what we want to have is a box which has a display flex and it's going to be justified at the end we just have a typography to display the total books count for that specific category and then last but certainly not least the actual content of the tab itself so this time instead of doing object.keys we're doing object.values on the tabs to get those components that we're passing in and it's going to use the current tab to be displayed within this box of role tab panel you can also see here that we have hidden set to tab does not equal index so if the current index isn't being set then that tab will be hidden from the view so to see this in action let's go to the bookshelf component and add in our bookshelf tabs which we can import from bookshelf tabs and the books count is going to be an array of the unread books length and let's change this to unread and import book now if we go back to our app we can see that we've got a container it has the total books showing in the corner as well as the tabs we don't have any other tabs on this but we can see that our component that we've created in here is also being rendered right next to each other so let's now go and create our bookshelf cards so i'm going to create a bookshelf card component and this is going to look like this right now we have a bookshelf card props which is going to take in book and it's also going to take in handle update book which has an input of the update book input from a GraphQL schema and then the bookshelf card itself is going to have a handler for handling updated book favorites which will take in the ID for the book and set the favorite to the opposite of what it currently is and here we are reusing this book card component that we created in the last episode and we're passing in the book here we don't need to spread it like we did in the Google book card because this is now the correct type that we're expecting. The card content is just going to use the card title again that we created so that we could reuse a typography of the first author in the list. And then in the card actions, we're just going to have a favorite icon button, which will set our book to being a favorite if we click on it. And these are using the two icons favorite and favorite border from Material UI. If it is a favorite, then the color will be of type error which is basically just red uh, otherwise it will just have an outline so if we now use this instead of what we've currently got right now in here just set that to bookshelf card and import it we can set book to this book and also we can set handle update book to handle update book from our hook and now you can see these are rendering down here like this and we can also favorite them and that should make a request to the back end we can see it's all the update book and it's returned the data and now favorite is now true so if we refresh the page we can see it's still set to favorite whilst the others aren't next let's create the book details dialog and this will be a dialog that we can import from material ui so the props for this component will be handle close and the book the handle close will pass in as a function that we can use to actually close this dialog and in here we're using the use theme hook from material ui as well so that we can get the breakpoints for the media query and basically what this is basically saying that if it's lower than md which i believe is about 900 pixels will have full screen set to true so that the dialogue will take up the entire screen rather than just being contained within the center the max width of this dialogue is medium as well we're just going to have open fixed for now um there is another way of doing this as well where you pass in open into here and then set open from the value that you're passing in but i usually tend to avoid that method just because if you're editing things inside the dialogue then you can end up in the situation where you're opening the dialogue with different data and it's still retaining some data from the old one so i'm going to be showing you a different way of handling that unclose just uses the hand handle close function that's being passed in and then we have uh, set the paper props to have an sx of border radius 25 pixels we'll start off with a stack of direction row 
And basically what we want is to have some data on the left and an image on the right. So I'm going to create two boxes, which I'll pull from zero UI. And the first box is going to have a few different properties on it. It's going to have a display of flags with direction column and justify content space between. The width of this, however, is going to be 70%. And the width of my second box is going to be 30%. However, it's going to have a height of 100% also. And within the second box, I'm just going to have an image with a source from book image links, same as we did in the Google book card with a small thumbnail and either one of these. And if it doesn't have an image, it will just default to our notebook image. And we'll set the width and height to 100% and the style will have an object fit of cover. So that will be our image display. And then within our content, we'll have a, a few different things, starting off with a dialogue title, which will just be the book title itself. And then within the dialogue content, we'll have a stack, which will contain dialogue content text. And in here, let's just import all of these missing attributes. And inside the content text, we're going to have a div, which is just taking the description and we're taking the first 500 characters from the description and appending it with a dot 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 just because if the description is too long we don't want to include the whole thing in there and beneath that we'll have a link that will redirect you to either the preview link or the info link otherwise we'll just default to nothing but it should always have one of these two anyway so we'll be able to use those to click and read more um, and then underneath it we just have a little bit of more information which includes the whole list of authors so instead of just showing the first one here we're just doing a join with a comma so we can have multiple authors the book's publisher as well as the published date so let's save that and go back to our bookshelf component and now in here we can create some new state properties which will be open and set open which will handle the showing and hiding of the dialogue as well as the detailed book that we're going to be showing in those dialogues so when the user fires off handle click open we'll take in a book and we'll set that details book then set open to true now if i have this set open to true first and this after then what can actually happen is i might see a flicker of an old book or no book when i first open so we want to swap these around so that set open happens after i set the details book and then right at the top of our component rendering here we'll add this in which will check if it's open and it has a book then we will show the book details dialog and pass those two values in. So if we just want to see what this does for us right now, let's just add in a quick little button with on click or handle click open and take in this book. And let's just wrap this around the bookshelf card as well and go back to our app. You can see we've got click me on top of all of these. So if I click on this JavaScript one, now I'm presented with this modal. I can click close to close it and I can click read more and that will take me to the Google Books page. I can actually view the whole book here. Sometimes it will just show you a quick preview. Uh, so that's that's a pretty cool thing that we can do with those links. Cool. So we're not going to be actually having it in that button there. So let's just remove it from there for now. And the next thing we can do is create the bookshelf card menu which will start off looking like this, uh, which will take in uh, bookshelf card menu props, uh, taking the book and handle click open. And the bookshelf card menu itself will have these anchor L properties, which we will use with our menu. So this menu is imported from Material UI and using this anchor L, it will be able to figure out where you've clicked on the screen and where it should open the menu from. So that's what that's for. And then we have a handle click on this icon button here, which uses the more vertical icon. We'll change this to card menu and the menu itself will be set to open once handle click has been clicked on, which will set open to true. And then within this menu, the first item that we're going to have is just a view more, which has a list item icon of the visibility icon. And when we click on handle view more, that's going to do handle click open, which will show the menu to us. So let's go and add this into the book card component. And we're just going to add it in underneath here. So let's import this and also let's import handle click open as well. 
then we can have that in here if we save that now we need to also add it into where we're calling the bookshelf card so handle click open is going to be using the handle click open function and now if we save that and go back to here let's just refresh the page bookshelf card menu is complaining go and save this file if i save the file i'll come back here we see we've got this little menu icon now and if i click it it pulls up this menu with view more and i click this then this comes up now cool so let's continue building out our card menu and what we'll do is we'll add in another item here for removing the book so we'll have a menu item the list item icon and a remove text and when the user clicks on this then it's going to actually remove this book from their bookshelf so in order to do that we need to import these two values into this component so let's go ahead and do that we'll add in hand handle book and, and delete book loading and we'll bring these into the component as well and then here we'll create a handler for handling delete book click which will call the handle delete book method with the book id and then it will just close down the menu for us afterwards so now we can use that in the on click and the whole menu item will be disabled whilst it's loading and we'll also be showing a tiny little spinner whilst it's loading uh, otherwise we'll show the delete icon so we actually need to create this small loading spinner first uh, so if we go to the bookshelf style and here we can create a styled circular progress and we can just set the max height and max width to 20 pixels i'm also going to set the color to main here and now if i go back to the menu i can import that from the bookshelf style and we can also import the delete icon from movie now if i save that i know i'm also going to be needing these two values in the other component but let's just continue building this component out first and then we'll go back and add in everything in there later i also want the user to be able to change which category their book is in from this little menu so in order to do that i'm going to create a new component called book status menu item and within this book status menu item will be a component that takes in the props of current status which is the book's current status status which is the status that we want to set the book to uh, handle update book status which we'll use to update it and update book is loading so that we can do the same thing we did on the other one which is add a loading spinner to the menu item while it's loading so the menu item is just basically going to have an on click to do the update it's going to be disabled whilst the update is happening and the list item icon will be the loading spinner if the current status equals status and the update is happening and if the current status equals status and our update is not happening, then we'll show the done icon to signify that that's currently selected as the status on that book. We also want to show the status as text. So I'm just going to create a new function here, which will take in the status and switch over it. And for whichever status it is, it's going to put out a readable label for that category. So on red will be to read, reading will just be the same. And if it's red, it will say finished. And then we can just add this in here like this. And this should take in status. So let's save that. Now let's go back to the bookshelf card menu. And what we can do here is add some more menu items. The first of which is just going to be um, a label for the status just to make it a bit easier for the user to read. And then we will loop over these three book statuses. So I'm just creating an array out of them to map over it. And then for each status, we're going to be using one of these book status menu items that we've just created to have that in the menu. So I'm just going to import all of these missing things but we do still need the handle book status function and the update book loading so we can import that in like this let's have an input of update book input and we can have these two in here like this let's save that and then now we just need to create a new handler which will look like this handle update book status will take in status if the status is the same as the current book status so if the user just clicks on the same status that it currently is then it won't close the menu uh, otherwise we will update the book and then handle close so let's save that now we've got the menu done we can come back to our bookshelf card and pass in the correct props into this component 
First, we need to import these in here. Handle delete book, update book loading, and delete book loading. And then let's just import them in here as well. Put that out. And then we'll add them to this one. And if we save that, now we are importing all the required things that we need to pass into the menu and then actually passing it into the menu down here. So if we just copy these and go back to here, let's just replace all of these with the correct properties that we're supposed to pass in. Now, if we save that and go back to the browser, we can open this and we can see these are all set to a status of uh, to read it has view more and remove we can actually remove them and they should work so if we click remove and go to network this was a delete book and it was successful if we refresh the page we can see that now that's gone and we can also change this to reading and now that's also been removed from this category it hasn't been deleted uh, but it's just been moved to another category which we're not currently displaying so let's go and sort that out and actually show the different categories that we have to do this i'm going to create a new component called bookshelf hard list tsx and this component is going to look like this it's going to import all of those different things that we were importing into your bookshelf card from before uh, but instead we'll be taking in the list of books as well and we'll be using the used theme hook again to check that if it's a mobile view or not and if it is mobile we're going to change the stack direction from column to row that'll just make it a bit easier to see on the mobile phone uh, we'll have spacing of one padding of two and overflow will just be auto and then we're going to be looping through the books in this component instead and then rendering the bookshelf card within here which is basically just putting it in a stack so that it can be displayed nicely within our containers so i'm just going to save that and then go back to our bookshelf component and here instead of having this as on red the first container i'm going to want at the top is going to actually be the reading ones so i'm just going to change this to reading and then i don't need to map over it anymore as we're going to be doing the books inside of it so i can remove all of this and change this bookshelf card to bookshelf card list and instead of book we're going to be taking in books this time and import this from bookshelf card list not book sorry i need to actually pass in books dot reading so now if i save this and go back to here i can see now it's set this to reading and the formatting is looking a little bit nicer so now what i can have is also another bookshelf tabs underneath where i can show the other two categories so first i'll have on red and then secondly i'll have the red book so in here i'll have this as to read and this will be on red and then i'll have another tab in this container which will be finished and this one can be set to red now i can go back to my app and you can see i've got these two containers the first one is reading and the second one is to read and also i've got a finished tab in here i'll go back to explore and just add in a few more books and i add in some random books and i go back to my bookshelf and to refresh the page i've got all of these books loading up and i can change them to finish so now it's in this category and if i want to change it to reading it comes up in here and all of that is happening on the back end as well as the front end so now let's handle how this loading thing is happening obviously we don't want to keep it as just like loading dot 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 let's add in a skeleton so we'll create a new file called bookshelf card skeleton and this is going to be a paper with elevation and some styling on that paper itself so just some box shadow just to match the original cards that we have and then we'll have a stack that's aligning all the items in the center with a box of height 150 uh, to mimic the size of the image and then we'll have two text skeletons underneath with fixed height and width now if we go back into the bookshelf card list component we can then import loading into this component as well and then within here instead of rendering books directly what we'll do is 
We'll say if it's loading, we'll create a new array with six items and map over those. And then we will display a bookshelf card skeleton for each of those items. So if I save that and go to the bookshelf component, I can now remove this line from here and then passing loading into this component. Now if I go back to the app and hit refresh, we should be able to see cards loading up with skeleton rather than that loading dot dot dot. Oops, also need to add in the loading to these components here as well. So now we shouldn't see that error anymore. So let's just reload that. Let's just set this to slow 3G, refresh the page. We can see that these have loading skeletons as well. Doing this, just setting this to true. And then just have them constantly visible whilst you make it look a little bit neater. Uh, but we'll just set this back to loading. So there is a couple things I want to address here. So when we created the AppSync API, you might remember me mentioning about this line here where we had a limit that defaulted to 20. So in the case that we have more than 20 books, we actually won't be getting all the data that we need here. Obviously, we can just up the limit as well to a higher number so that we can just load more data anyway. But to make this scalable, we want to add in some pagination with our backend API. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. So if we go into our hooks and go to use bookshelf, let's add in fetch more to this use list books query. And then we're going to create a handler so that we can actually pick a button and fetch more items. So those of you that watched the previous video would have seen me do something similar with the Google Books API, where we changed the start index to books.length to Get the next set of results however in this case uh on our AppSync api we receive a next token when there are more items for us to get so in this case we are just going to be passing in the variables the next token that we get from our data and then in our update query we'll look at the previous result and the new result if there are no more new results we'll just return the previous results otherwise we'll set the items of both of those results into these two variables and basically if the new one has items then we will create a new array with the previous books and the new books and then return those combined results to the cache so that we can get an updated version of that in our local cache we also have to manage the loading state of this ourselves so import that in i went into a little bit more detail about why we need to do this with the apollo caching in the last episode so just go check that out towards the end of that video i do an example of what happens when we fetch more without having this update query functionality in there and why it's important for us to have it so in here we're just going to export the fetch more books and fetching more loading state we'll take that back to our bookshelf and have that in here and then what we want to do is underneath the page title here we'll create a new loading button which will import from Miri lab have a variant of contained whilst it's loading it'll be set to fetching more uh, and on click it will fetch more books so there is a problem that right now where this is still being shown even if there are no more books so if i click load more right now it's just going to be loading the same thing over and over again and that's a bug so we don't want that what we want to do is disable the button if we can't fetch anymore and the way to do that we're just going to create a new variable in here called can fetch more books which will use memo to look at the data and see if we've got a next token and if we do have a next token that means we can get more books so let's return the can fetch more books from here and import it from the hook and then we'll say that this button will be disabled if we can't fetch more books so now this is grayed out so we can't really prove that this is working right now because we don't have enough books um let's go and search for something else let's do harry potter and let's add some books there is another issue as well where when we add books and navigate back to this page it doesn't make a new request because Apollo is clever enough to uh, save that data in the cache and it will prevent us from making multiple requests for data that we already have. But in this case, we do want to be able to get the latest data every time we load this component. So the way we can change that is by going into our use bookshelf 
hook and and within our options we're going to set the fetch policy to cache and network which will allow us to use data that's stored in the cache whilst we're on the page but also use the network to fetch the data again if we reload this component so now if i go back to explore page and go back to bookshelf you'll see that it would have loaded up these new books so let's just go and add in some more books in here Going to add this book. I can add on anything at this point. Going back to my bookshelf, uh, these have started loading in. I've still got 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, let's do python let's just add anything right now back to bookshelf okay now we've got 16 17 18 19 we still need more books get some other javascript books in here not the best but sure let's just add them to our bookshelf okay uh it seems that we have hit some sort of limit as you can see it's showing 16 books 17 18 19 either we have a zero index issue here or it doesn't it actually only lets us get 19 objects let me just check uh the list books query um yeah no we're getting 20 books ah i think it's because we may have test book yeah that's why so we have test book in there and that's not actually being shown in here so that's why it's not adding up to 20. but now if i click load more now you can see it's uh, it's showing 30 books and it's loading even more books and now load more is disabled because the second query didn't have a next token and that's because it didn't have 20 items it only had 15. <clears throat> cool i'll move some of these to reading and some of these to finished So one final thing that I wanted to show, which was uh, regarding the cache again, if we now delete one of these and click remove, we can see that if we go to network, delete book was a hit and and it was successful but the python for dummies book is still here however if i refresh the page it's gone and that's not because i need to load more even if i click load more it's still gone it's it's been removed so what we want to do is when we delete the book we want to have the latest data showing so one way of doing this is doing the refetch uh option on this query and once you've deleted the book you could do refetch here so that means now when i delete one of these books let's delete this book everything loads up again and that book is then removed you can load more and it still won't come back um but that's not the most optimal way because that's a whole other request that you need to make. So instead of doing that, what we'll do is inside the usually book mutation arguments, we'll add in this update cache here. So what this will do is it will take the cache and the data that we get back from our API. And if there's no delete book in our data, we will just exit and return. Uh, but if there is, then we will use cache.identify delete book, which will basically give us the normalized ID of that book in the cache. And um, this is what the ID is. So one of these IDs, and then we can evict them from the cache and do the garbage collection, which is just what you have to do to remove it and clear it and if we save that then what we can now have is instead of making that second query where we did a deletion followed by listing the books we can just have a nice and easy experience for the user where we remove the book and the book gets removed from the cache so it gets removed from the ui but only one request is made. That makes both the user experience nice and clean, but also keeps your app performing just a little bit better. And that is it for the video. We've finished building our bookshelf app all the way from being able to create an account to signing in with a fully functional authentication system. And within our application, we have an explore page where we're able to search for different books add them to our bookshelf and then in our bookshelf manage them by having them in different categories reading to read and finish i encourage you to build on what we've already built to increase your knowledge further 
You should have picked up some good skills in this course, but having a play around with the architecture and the code base and trying new things are a great way to expand your skill set. This is also what the app looks like on mobile view. Go to the explore page. We can also view things in mobile format. If you made it to the end of this course, then I'd love to know your opinions on it. Tell me what you liked about it and tell me what I can do better in future videos. And if you learned anything from me, then I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.